The third day's play of this final Britannic Assurance County Championship match of 1997. Welcome to the highlights. And if you were thinking of going to bed, hold it right there because you will not want to miss this in the next half hour. Now, at the end of play, at the close of the second day, this is how the match stood. Glamorgan 353 for four overnight. That wonderful innings of Matthew Maynard, 142. Hugh Morris, 136, not out. And Robert Croft, 18, not out. And we'll pick up play now with the second ball of the morning. It is Andy Caddick to Robert Croft. 353 for Robert Croft, 18. Hugh Morris, 136. And the lead is 101. Upish and runs back to the square on the offside. This is a chase for Michael Burns. And it'll be a couple, it'll be three. Gloved it. I think he's gloved it. Short, fast delivery from Hugh to Hugh Morris. And it's 150 up for the Glamorgan opener. This has been a wonderful innings, appreciated by his teammates and by the fans. Beautiful shot. Beautiful shot. A classic clever drive by Hugh Morris. It's in the air, but it's beaten. Trot, Ben Trot at mid on. It's racing away to those boundary boards. Won't quite make it this time. And two runs to Robert Croft takes him on to 26. Well, three runs to Croft takes him on to 27. And that is the 100 partnership between Hugh Morris and Robert Croft. That's a beautiful shot. That really is. Well controlled. Three bounces and he hits the rest. 400 up, coming up in the 76th over. Bowling! That was a beautiful delivery, beating for pace as well as swing and Caddick strikes. The fifth wicket goes down, 404. And a standing ovation, out for 165. Caddick gets the applause from his teammates. Morris gets the cheers of the crowd. A marvellous innings, and what could be his last innings for Glamorgan. At the end of a magnificent innings, threw him for pace. Morris pulled Caddick, 165. Did a little across this delivery, trying to work it through the leg side, and over goes the off stump. Well, there's no need. That's six. What a way to go to it. Straight over long off. Robert Cook goes to 55. The Glamorgan players stand and applaud. Cook takes his helmet off and acknowledges. The Somerset players applaud too. The crowd enjoyed every moment of that. There's six more. Same place. A little bit longer. Just about a straight. Oh. Three sixes, that's even bigger. It's exactly the same place. Almost into the Glamorgan players' balcony. What an exhibition of clean hitting this is. Well bowled. And he's managed to cut that away for four. Is it four? Yes, it'll race away, I think. No, he's just, the field has just managed to get it. It's the 50 partnership in 41 balls in 30 minutes. That's got to be very close. It is out. Umpire Pity Willie's finger goes up. And Graham Rose has struck at last. Been a long toil for the Somerset bowler. And the end of... A very, very well played innings has been brought to an end with an LBW. Robert Croft LBW bowled Graham Rose for 86. 
nine fours and three sixes in that innings and acknowledging the crowd that's a very good gesture from Robert Croft Graham Rosen has bowled well throughout has not had much luck and that seems pretty plum to me interested to see it from the height but he certainly was in line and uh, not little hesitation there from Peter Willey out Darren Thomas is gone caught Eccleston bowled Ben Trott and that is Ben Trott's first wicket in county championship cricket big moment for him he's tried hard and he'll look back on uh, a memorable match for him Darren Thomas gone for naught could play a bit that's a good shot just a, a yard inside the boundary rope. Chipped him. It's in the air. Eccleston is underneath it. And Eccleston has taken a good catch. Second wicket for Ben Trott. Awaka Yunus departs on five. It's the eighth Glamorgan wicket to go down. 482 for eight. That is a big moment for young Ben Trott. Waka Yunus, one of the world's great cricketers, back in the pavilion, and that's one for the scrapbook. Rather a hopeful uh, shot, this pulling at a length and quite simply caught there by Eccleston. That's out, and that's Ben Trott's third wicket. Kevin Shine just plucks that out the air. And he's having a good run as a young man. Ninth wicket goes down at 4.95. Well, that's a lovely shot. <laughs> yeah, that's been one of the reasons that Glamorgan have uh, batted on. It scored so quickly. Oh. That's six. That's over long off. That's right into the top of the Colin Atkinson stand. George Sharp, the umpire, second and six. So that was a magnificent strike. So easy. It was like watching Tiger Woods hit a three iron. Those spectators, right up the top. Yeah, those spectators have been in danger today. A brilliant shot by Adrian Shaw. Caddick to Shaw needs one for 50. There it is. <laughs> a long wave of the bat to the crowd. It's again, another standing ovation. It's about the fifth time that the players' balcony and the crowd have been on their feet today. Perfect delivery to Andy Innings. Yorker, middle and off, over they go. And Caddick picks up his fourth wicket. A magnificent effort by the Glamorgan batsman. Hugh Morris, 165. Matthew Maynard, 142. Robert Croft, 86. And Adrian Shaw, 53 not out at the end. 527 in their first innings. A lead of 275. Glamorgan, when they bowled, first thing after lunch, looking to make early inroads into the Somerset second innings. Well... Some of have got off to a real flyer in the second innings. Haven't bowled two overs yet, and they're already into 20. Like a Yunus. Well, that's four. It's an over pitch ball. Croft was out the right area, but even that was too fast for him. Wacker is just consistently over pitch. That's another four. This is an extraordinary explosive start by Somerset. Beautifully timed, pushed through mid on. Raced off the bat and away for another boundary.
from Cotty. That's the 50 up. Coming up in the seventh over. 41 balls. Rob Turner's got 38 of those, and Pierre and Holloway, 10. strikes a full-length ball Turner who'd looked in such magnificent form played outside the ball and the first wicket goes down let's have a look full nips back and good pace it's between bat and pad through him for pace and out goes that off stump and around the wicket now to Piran Holloway it's in the air would have been down third slip's throat. Not so sure that Matthew Maynard caught a glimpse of that, and Matthew Maynard is one of the best slip fielders in the country. It's another boundary, it's 67 for one. Oh, he's got him this time, though. Holloway is gone, and it's a second wicket for Darren Thomas. A huge roar around the ground from thousands of Welsh fans who come over the bridge. Darren Thomas striking at the heart of the Somerset batting. Both openers gone. Around the wicket, changing the angle, pulling it down, but quick, extra pace there, and it's got him fencing outside the off stump, and Shaw does the rest. Excellent wicket. You can see the bounce there that he gets, that generates, and movement off the pitch. A lovely dismissal. That was a chance. That was a chance. He knows it. Came back pretty quickly to him. Change of pace, higher loop, and fails to keep it down. Just about carried to the bowler. Just wide, Dean Kosker at Gully. This really is a lovely spell from Darren Thomas. He's found the edge two or three times, got two very good wickets, Turner and Holloway. And he's still causing trouble out there. Lothwell playing slightly across and getting the thick outside edge, but it just eludes those three close catches. That must be oh, oh dear, oh dear. Well, they don't come much easier than that. And just the right place for a stroke maker to have a go at. And you watch Hugh Morris now, never mind Matthew Maynard. See, Morris is following the ball, he almost got it. If it hadn't hit Matthew on the knee, I think there's a chance he might have got that. Good bowling, that. Two are almost identical balls. The problem again, of course, is that they don't leave it, the left-handed batsman, because if they do, if they do and it runs onto the pad, they don't play a shot. They stand the chance of being out LBW. Two good balls in a row. Now what? That's out. Oh, dear. Very, very difficult to catch those. There's a sort of flash of wood and dust and feet, and well, that's uh, three catches down now, Glamorgan. One by Costco, one by Maynard, and now one by Cotty. One of the difficult positions to field is at slip to an off spinner, and uh, Tony Cotty almost got that in his grasp, just beaten by the height of the ball, I think. That must be out, and that is out. Hugh Morris making an easy catch look exactly that. Steve Watkin is the man who's done the trick, and that uh, miss by Matthew Maynard and by Tony Cotty, hardly counts. Port Morris, Paul Wacker in the first innings, Port Morris, Paul Watkin in the second. Uh, Hugh Morris never it. looked like dropping this. Outside edge, straight in, get in. Is he happy? Watkin probing away outside that off stump, finds the outside edge this time, and Hugh Morris takes the catch. That is another chance. 
Well, it was a tough one, but these are critical moments. Robert Croft getting turned and bounced. He's played that pretty well. Just on the back foot. Just punched it straight past Steve Watkin. Extraordinary shot. He's brought in four runs. Lathwell racing away and it's gone for four. And brings up the hundred for Somerset. 101 for three. A wacker Eunice now around the wicket to Marcus Truscothic. Yeah. Catch and it's gone. Adrian Shaw's dropped it. Waka Eunice has followed through right down to the crease, to the striker's end. He is disappointed. And there are too many spill chances, too many chances going. Pulled this with a very round arm action. Sling down the leg side. That looked as if it was off the thigh pad to me. as though it was off the thigh pad. Adrian Shaw fails to hold onto it. Fast. That was a very fast delivery from Wacky Eunice. Oh, that's out. It's got him this time. It's been a long wait. It's taken a long time, but Robert Croft has struck to take the fourth Somerset wicket. Triscothic caught by Steve James. At the stroke of tea, Matthew Maynard giving warm congratulations to Steve James, who's been crouched sitting under that helmet for virtually the entire Somerset second innings. And four down, 133 for four. It's the breakthrough they dearly needed. Ball for 47, and the crowd are on their feet, and the players are just rejoicing. And here's Thomas. This is an absolute snorter. Lathwell on the back foot. It's like a leg break. It goes away off the pitch. Out goes the stump. What an absolute beauty. Well, he's known in the game, Darren, as the chap who bowls the wicket-taking ball, and that really is it. When you think from the angle he bowled that, it is almost like a fast leg break as far as the batsmen are concerned. Really whipping the ball down and oh gee got him all turned around and really what a wonderful moment that was for Darren Thomas and for Glamorgan <gasps> it must be out what a way for Darren Thomas to round off what is turning out to be a magnificent day and a wonderful performance by this man didn't get off the mark with a bat, but how he's made his mark with the ball. Well, they're delighted by that, and not surprisingly, as the sixth wicket goes down. And having said that Peter Bowler wasn't to be troubled by pace, he's been undone by pace, undone by a super delivery from Darren Thomas. Just nips back and it would have hit about middle and leg stump. Peter Bowler got across the wickets, played around his front pad. And that's out. And that's four. And it's gone away quickly off the bat. 
Perhaps he'd like a game. Couple of years time. It's going to get stronger, of course. The more overs you bowl every season, you build up a bowling strength. Oh, it's gone. Yes, Darren Thomas has taken the fifth wicket. Michael Burns has gone. Wonderful celebrations all around the ground and in the middle. His teammates rush to congratulate the young cricketer from Llanelli, Darren Thomas. Waka Yunus hasn't taken a wicket in this second innings, but he's the first to go there to congratulate Darren Thomas. Burns has gone, caught behind by Adrian Shaw, off the bowling of Darren Thomas for 18, and seven Somerset batsmen are back in the pavilion. Is the destroyer, Darren Thomas, quick outside edge and just carries to Adrian Shaw. Good catch by the wicketkeeper. Full delivery. Quick. Outside edge. And well taken by Adrian Shaw. And that was a slowish delivery. Wacker tried to bowl the disguised cutter and it's slashed away by Graham Rose gone through cover for four and it brings up the 200 for Somerset around the wicket and that's been pulled away for four and that's his 50 Graham Rose enjoying himself scoring a well-deserved half century they haven't had too much to cheer about Somerset but this has been a good innings by the Somerset all-rounder in his benefit year. Well, Adrian Shaw and Steve Watkin have done it. They've broken this partnership between Graham Rose and Andy Cutter, which was at 95 runs, and it couldn't have come at a better moment for Glamorgan because Somerset have put up a tremendous rearguard battle here. Shots all round the wicket, it's been a marvellous day's cricket. As Graham Rose, who's contributed to that, with the bat certainly out for 67. Catch it. Well, terrible shot by Kevin Shine. Lob straight to mid on, and that's the ninth wicket down. It's very, very it close. It is fast. It's, it's out. <laughs> Dean Koska has taken the last Somerset wicket. LBW. And there is pandemonium here in Taunton. Matthew Maynard beaming, smiling, running, excited. There is pandemonium. Fans are running all over the ground. Some of the stumps have been uprooted by a spectator. That's not on. But it means that Glamorgan now have to score just 11 runs to win this match. And would it not be fitting if either Hugh Morris or Steve James scored the winning runs in what has been a marvellous season for Steve James, Players' Player of the Year? I have to tell you that this is emotional. It certainly is, and it's not easy going out there to bat, I shouldn't think. There's probably a tear in the eye going out there. And uh, Don, I think they'd bat it at midnight if it meant getting 11 runs. I think runs. they would, and there's not going to be a messing about the sort of end to the match. I see Andy Caddick paw in the ground there. They're going to bowl properly, Somerset. To witness. Oh, that's a lovely shot. Steve James flashing cover drive. It's going all the way. That's his trademark shot, and this summer we've seen many of those. I wanted rather. Wouldn't it be great if uh, Hugh Morris were to win this with one blow? Hugh Morris off the mark. Down the leg side it goes to Andy Caddick. Both the Glamorgan openers have opened their accounts. Glamorgan, seven for no wicket. The target is 11. It needs just 
one one little blow of four runs that would do it this has been the most unbelievable cricket match we knew the size of the prize we knew what the stakes were clipped away by Steve James it's going all the way it's four to Steve James and Glamorgan are the 1997 county champions this is drama in Taunton thousands of Welsh fans marauding onto the county ground Steve James and Hugh Morris depart this is quite unbelievable but Glamorgan for the third time in the club's history are the county champions of England and let it be said and of Wales there must be the fat end of 3,000 people out there cheering chanting more and more joining them the players are rejoicing in this reception for them and I think this is going to be the longest weekend of the year well, come here we've got 24 points you know what more can you ask for that's it Don not just yourself but Alan Jones and Peter Walker and Roger Davis were here to watch that what was the emotion going through your mind when those winning runs were hit uh, I think it was uh, even worse than when we won it ourselves because when you're involved as I said before you you don't really worry too much about it you can just give your best on the field but sitting and watching and uh, and trying to wonder where I would have put a fieldsman who would what change would I have made next it all goes through your mind and you know at the end of the day when they won it what what the uh, reaction is going to be from the from the crowds because we've had it before in the past and it was confirmed wasn't it those wonderful wonderful scenes after the great victory here today well as you know part of our commentary team for this match and throughout the season has been Jeff Holmes who played for Glamorgan in the late 70s and the 80s Jeff what does this mean for the club terrific for the club they've got lots of plans building the new ground, developing the ground at Sophia Gardens, but it's important to have success on the field. I played in a side that didn't know how to win. This, this is a team of winners. They've won the top domestic trophy, and they must now move forward from here. Thanks very much, Jeff. Well, you've been part of a momentous moment in Glamorgan's history. 1948 under Wilf Wooler, 1969 under Tony Lewis, and now in 1997, Glamorgan are the champions under Matthew Maynard. From Taunton, it's good night.